and um, welcome to the evening shift of our 12-hour jam for um, celebrating um, NHS Change Day and what a fantastic day we've had. Now, you know, when I looked down the programme for the whole day in terms of what I thought was going to be most intriguing, you know, I thought putting these two topics together, which are Wi-Fi and compassion, was going to be like a really, really interesting um, session. So, um, so first of all, we've got um, Dr. Sebastian Yearn, who is a consultant, paediatrician, and named doctor for safeguarding children at George Eliot NHS Trust. And he's going to talk about his CEO pledge to offer free Wi-Fi for patients and staff. Then we're going to have Maxine Cray, Dr. Maxine Cray, who's head of organizational development at South Tees NHS Foundation Trust. And she's going to share her experience of facilitating three compassion circles in the Northeast on NHS Change Day. And then Sebastian and Maxine, no pressure, but I'm going to get you to both um, reflect afterwards on um, on like you know what um, what unites us, okay? So, um, first of all, um, let's hear from um, from Sebastian. Okay, right, thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here with you. Uh, yeah, can we mute everybody else apart from Sebastian? That's great. And and me. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. Um, sounds like you've had a fabulous day, and uh, it's a real privilege to be part of Change Day. Um, I've been a huge fan of this social movement since it's begun. Just to introduce myself, I'm a consultant pediatrician, and I, um, what's really changed my life is being a fellow at the NHS Institute for Innovation and Improvement back in 2008 to 2009 where I work with Helen and the Safer Care team to learn about improvement and um, I learned a lot about myself as well. Um, and from then um, I chose to go to Warsaw, um, just north of Birmingham, and we did the um, patient and family centre care programme and I learned there about um, shadowing patients and working with Hisham Abdallah, the Health Foundation and the King's Fund, we learned about how to um, better understand the user experience to work together with patients and co-produce care, working together to um, introduce small tests of change um, with patients as partners. I was then invited to go to George Eliot Hospital, and this was in um, less than a year ago and um, to create a, a new model of care. Um, George Elliott was in special measures, um, had financial difficulties, and was looking for a partner to take it over to ensure its sustainability. Pediatrics was um, felt to be unsafe at that time, and we've come in to create a new network model of care where there's no um, middle grade doctor, um, you have consultant delivered care 24 seven, and um, SHOs, junior doctors, um, and it's really like being in a startup. So we have been making rapid, continuous change within the department, and uh, it's a really exciting place to be. And actually, we just got a re report back this week, a draft report on the progress we've made, and the West Midlands Quality Review Service say we've gone from being the bottom in the region to the top in the region in pediatrics. Uh, and people have been there just one year ago to review it. Couldn't leave the game. So I'm going to describe um, a couple of things that we've done within the department and how NHS Change Day has really made a difference to us. So if we go to the next slide. So next slide, please. So in the talk, I'm going to talk about um, patient family centered care. Uh, also, just go to the overview. Um, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Um, what we've learned from shadowing patients. We're going to talk about how we got to have free Wi-Fi, and I'm briefly going to mention six C's after everyone, and that's because um, during the rest of the day today, um, there's been another national campaign kicking off, which is about um, the compassion practice. So let's go on to uh, the next slide, please. So 
most of you will be familiar with the um, tragedy in um, in staffs and Julie Bailey who led the Cure the NHS campaign. And one thing that she said that really resonates with me is that we need to turn the NHS the right way up, we have a frontline lead and patients are the priority. So really, um, we're moving from a top-down command and control NHS to a bottom-up um, NHS where we on the front line, working in partnership with patients, are together uh, making things better. And I think that that's going to be uh, a sustainable model for the future. So uh, let's go to the next slide, please. So I, I was part of the launch of NHS Change Day 2014. I think I was uh, kicked off in November last year, and I made uh, a pledge to shadow a patient. We got a lot of rich learning in all sorts from shadowing patients, and um, and there's a certain technique to this, and you're supposed to uh, just be there, be present, be mindful, um, accompany a patient, get permission, and just sit and observe. When we first started doing this, one of our um, admin team shadowed a patient and was really upset that uh, the care was so poor that they weren't offered food and drink despite waiting so long. And, and, uh, and she made an intervention to get a drink for the patient um, to help them. And, and that's not really how it's supposed to be, even though it's, um, it tears at your heart sometimes. I think it, it's important really to um, just be present and, and experience what it's really like. So I made a pledge at Change Day to um, shadow a patient. Now we've got a brand new service that's completely delivered. You can see from our waiting room here. It's a really nice setup. It's really transformed from how it used to be. And we're pretty pleased with it actually. And our waiting time is hardly anything at all. So I didn't know what to expect, but I, I turned up, I think it's December the 19th, it's here Christmas Eve there, and just sat in the waiting room in the evening. I thought I'd follow several patients and it'd be pretty straightforward. So there's a, and I've got permission to use these slides and the names, and there's a lady in the corner and a young daughter, and I was shadowing the young girl, and her mother was concerned that she had a urinary tract infection, and they'd seen the GP, and they'd lost the urine sample, and basically she was coming to us because she was concerned that maybe her daughter wasn't on the right antibiotic and maybe the, the infection was still there and she just wanted to test the urine. That's the only reason she came to the emergency department. She couldn't get back to GP. She couldn't get an appointment, so she came to see us. And we sat there and had a conversation. It seemed to be fine. But time kept passing and it started getting later. And they were told, we'll be with you soon, whatever that means. And I was thinking, well, I'm sure they will be really soon because we don't have a waiting time in, in our department. It's not that busy. And an hour passed and two hours passed and they so kept told you'll be there soon. And we could see through the door every now and then that um, it didn't seem that busy. And then other people would turn up with um, with injuries and I knew that they were being seen by the adult emergency department team. And they just walked straight in and we were thinking, what? We've been waiting for two hours. What's going on? Well, how can they go through, even though I knew that it was a different team who would be seeing them? So, the young girl then started getting quite tired. She was um, enjoying the toys and, the, and her experience. After two and a half hours, she started getting tired to get to her bedtime. At this time, I noted the um, gentleman in the middle of the picture there, Dean, and um, he'd been waiting patiently with his young son. Although his patient started going, and he was trying to use his phone and he couldn't get a signal. Um, it's really difficult to get a signal on the phone there. And he, he, I could sense his frustration, it was leaking out big time. And uh, he made a comment that he wished we had Wi Fi. So if we could go to the uh, next slide, please. Now, in the back of my mind, I was aware that the hospital had Wi-Fi. It had quite a complex 
system for Wi-Fi. For the start, you could go in in the morning and you go on the website and you have to go to a certain web page on the internet and find the code and type this into your phone. And it's a really long code with numbers and happy letters and full letters. And every time you left a room or part of the hospital, you'd have to retype the whole complex code in again. It was really frustrating, but it did exist, which is why not. In the back of my mind, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could press a button and make this available to patients? Because, you know, it's no cost. It's, it's, it's a potent symbol that we are being different. And there's a, you know, George Eliot is, is behaving differently. And it's, um, it's with the modern era. So I suggested to Dean, as he spontaneously made this comment that he wished there was Wi-Fi, um, I made a video of it. And I've put a link on the um, chat box, so you can click on that if you like. And it tells the whole of our story. So he made a video asking for Wi-Fi. So I thought, all right, I'll take this to the chief exec and see what he says. So I went to my chief exec, Kevin McGee, and I was quite surprised. He embraced the idea. He said, yeah, let's do it. And I thought that's pretty cool. So with, with engagement, it's okay for someone to say yes, but it's all about does anything happen? Because often people above us say, yeah, okay, we'll do that. And then nothing ever happens. The next thing I knew, I got an email from the head of IT saying, oh no, it doesn't quite work like that. It's really complicated. Uh, we don't have a firewall at the moment. It will cost £50,000. It will take weeks to do. This is never going to happen. Um, I'll work through it in my own time. About two minutes later, Kevin McGee, chief exec, fired an email back saying, just do it. And I, was, I felt really, really empowered and valued. And um, that's a beautiful example of how to engage yourself. So Kevin McGee had said, we want to do this. For, um, for NHS Change Day. So I think this must have been around January time. And what they actually had to do, because the existing Wi-Fi was, had its limitations, we went out and procured a whole new system. So they had to go around the country, find out who else was doing this, and got a whole new system. Really remarkable. So the next slide, please. So here's Kevin making his pledge um, just before Change Day to deliver free Wi Fi to patients and staff. Now, we went flat out. We had to procure a whole new system. So we weren't able to do it on the 3rd of March, but it went live on the 5th of March. It works now. It is an amazing system. You have to put a password in. Well, you don't even have to put a password in. You put the, your name, your email. And, and, and click log on, and the rest is auto, automatic for the rest of your time in the hospital. You can keep going there every week, and it's all automatic. So uh, it's a fabulous system. So thank you, Kevin. It, it's brilliant. Next slide, please. So following this, um, those of you on Twitter may remember that um, Helen and Roy Lilly and John Popham and a couple of others were talking the next day, and the conversation was all about, you know, Wi-Fi is a fundamental human right, and we, you know, wouldn't it be great if all hospitals had free Wi-Fi? So I put the link to John Popham's website, where he's got a campaign um, trying to get more organisations interested in this. And if you listen to the video from Dean Yardley. And he's saying it's really important to have Wi-Fi. It's, it helps the kids when they're bored play their games, but equally it enables family to communicate with their friends and their, their relatives. And, um, you know, it's actually a valuable resource. And also the staff use it. So I think that uh, in this social era, um, having free Wi-Fi has immense benefits. The next slide, please. I just want to come on briefly to the six C's are for everyone. The six C's, as many will know, is a campaign started by Jane Cummings, Chief Nursing Officer for NHS England. 
It's been going for a couple of years, and it's based on the concept of the NHS, um, the Olympic Games, maybe. About volunteering to come back to core values that unite us all. So um, I was at a meeting today. So I'm one of the care makers. Um, I'm one of about four or five doctors who are NHS care makers. There's about 1,000 nurses and about five doctors. And I'm a champion for this campaign, which I think has immense value. So it's about, so Bruce Keogh and Jane Cummings today were talking about, um, you know, that compassionate care is so important and the other four values there underpin it. So I'm hoping that um, through the work of NHS Change Day, through shadowing patients, through, in a talk I gave earlier today, I was talking about 30 seconds compassion, we can all all do this. And um, I think Maxine's going to tell us uh, some more fabulous tools that they're using um, in their trust, which I'm trying to bring into George Eliot as well. Um, I think that this has immense benefits for staff, for patients, and for the NHS as a whole. So, final slide, please. So, um, the shadowing for me opened um, a great perspective. Following the shadowing, um, a, number, a number of people in my department of shadowing, so I've gone on to shadow nurses. I've had people from the Health Service Journal shadow me, Michelle Mello at the Manager of England is going to shadow me. Um, we've got managers shadowing staff, and um, our local manager is also um, last week, she just went through her diary so that everyone knew uh, the, the incredible amount of work that she does each day. It was a real eye opener. I think that. Um, inviting patients to uh, become partners in our work as we improve the service is essential um, and makes a real difference. A, a cheeky challenge to um, to Helen and the team is what do you think about starting a free Wi-Fi campaign for the NHS? And I hope that all those listening and all those who support NHS change day will become care makers because um, care makers, the care maker network is like having change day every day. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Sebastian. My goodness me, that was a, it was a narrative, it was a story, um, it was, um, uh, you know, a kind of um, uh, patient-centered success story and it was a challenge and a call to action for the future. So um, thank you so much. So what I want us to do now, I want us to listen to Maxine. And then, um, Sebastian, I'm going to get you to come back and comment on Maxine's presentation. I'm going to get Maxine to do the same for you. Is that OK? Brilliant. OK, so um, Maxine, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. And you sound fantastic. So uh, Maxine, the virtual floor is yours. All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, could you put the first slide up, please? Um, it's nice to be with everybody. I'm in a rather miserable, rainy, wet northeast, but the northeast is always beautiful as well, even when it's wet, wet and rainy. Um, so it's good to be with you all this evening. My contribution this evening is to tell you about some work that we've got going on here in the northeast, which is about looking at compassion and this little tag that we've got in front of us now. I think before I started this work, it was just this whole idea of the six C's seemed to be coming at everybody. And there was a lot of dialogue in my organisation that it was just something else that had to be done. And I thought about compassion and I had, I've changed my opinion actually about compassion in the, the last um, year while I've been doing this work. But I think this has become a bit of a strap line for me, this little tag here, that it's not good enough just to be compassionate and to think you're a compassionate person. You've got to do something about it. So I suppose the, my pledge was about doing something about it. Next slide, please. I met Andy Bradley from Frameworks for Change quite, um, um, you know, it wasn't a, it was a chance meeting and he was working up in the northeast and via Twitter invited me to meet with him for a, for a 
for an evening just to understand the work that Frameworks for Change were doing around this work. And I've just realised there's a spelling mistake on that slide, so I apologise for that. And Andy, myself and our Chief Executive, Tricia Hart, went up to meet Andy. And Andy asked us a couple of days before, would we mind, rather than just meeting with him, to discuss the work that we wanted to do with South Tees if we experienced a compassion circle with other people from the North East? And we just put ourselves in Andy's hands, really, and we've always found Andy to be genuine, honest, and inspiring in terms of the work he's helped us with across the organisation. So we tipped up to the northeast, um, the top end of the northeast, and we just had a fantastic hour and a half just thinking about compassion. And in that hour and a half, both myself and Trisha Hart realised that we had to somehow take this work quickly back into the organisation because we realised that our organisation needed this work. Um, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about what we've learned from that. So next slide, please. This, this slide is just here to say Andy and Framework for Change methodology is all about compassion circles. And a lot of people ask me, and Sebastian asked me when, when we met recently, just tell me about it, what do you do? And I think the circles, I'd already begun to do some work on circles across the NHS. And circles have become really important to me in terms of methodology and a way of sitting together with people equally, listening Everybody's sitting at the same level, nobody's more important, and just learning to listen and be with people. And when you look at the history and the sort of research around um, circles, it goes back many, many thousands of years. People have always, human beings have always sat in circles. And Framework for Change methodology provides you with a, a simple but structured approach to sitting together in circles, creating space for people to think about compassion, compassion for themselves, compassion for others and then for me particularly in our organization we've strengthened the work on what does all of this mean in terms of compassion in our organization but I can't emphasize um, more strongly that the, at the heart of this is the notion of compassion for self you cannot be compassionate if you're not looking after yourself and being compassionate for yourself so what, what have I learned through the pledge that, that I did? And I'll speak a little bit about the pledge and show you some, some slides of, of the people that have got involved. I've learned that people struggle with this stuff. Um, if you invite people to a compassion circle, um, people struggle. They don't know what they're coming to. They feel quite anxious sometimes. Um, I've had lots of comments about all this fluffy stuff. We haven't got time. We've got patients to look after. And what I've learned is when they've been, they say, wow, when are we doing it again? So I think there's something about how we talk about this in organisations and help people experience looking after themselves in organisations in order that we can look after our patients and the, the public we serve. I've learned that the words are, are, are really important um, and, and what we call these things are really important. We've started talking about um, compassion conversations. That seems to help for some people. Some people I just ask them if they'd like to come and sit and chat about kindness and compassion in their area. We use the same methodology. So I think there is something about how we introduce this into organisations. And I've learned that um, a lot of staff are worried and are quite cynical now about compassion, that it's becoming a target and something that there's, there's tick lists about. So there's lots of negative debate about compassion when I move around the country, as well as the positive debate. So there are polarized groups around compassion. So I think before I move on to the next slide, you know, just to re-emphasize here, this approach to sitting together, sitting together well, um, listening, sitting equally together, is about compassion for ourselves so that we can generate more compassion in our organizations so our patients get better care. Next slide, please. I think my biggest learning has been that in the part of the NHS that I work in, which predominantly is an acute and integrated organisation, people want the science of compassion. People will come to something and sit with you and participate in a circle if we start by introducing the compassion of science. So that's my starting point now in most of the places I go. And Paul Gilbert's work has been sort of inspirational and seminal for me. Next slide, please. In terms of helping people understand the three regulatory 
um, systems that, that manage our, help us manage our emotions. So I would advocate that anybody who's thinking about replicating this work start with the science because it seems to make it go in easy when you get over some of the barriers. Next slide, please. We decided on change day that we, um, we, I would step out of my comfort zone. I'd done some compassion circle work in the organisation, but we said we would um, offer a, an NHS compassion circle to anybody in Middlesbrough, and we paired up with a um, family-run business called the Cairo Group um, in Middlesbrough, and the chief exec is on that slide. And we ended up with a really interesting group. In that slide that you see, there are NHS staff, there's a, a solicitor, there's a policeman, there's an occupational therapist, there's two people with neurodisabilities, one guy with a, um, a head injury came off a motorbike and, and has recovered and is now working back as an engineer. There's um, a couple of therapists there and a service improvement lead from the key role group. And it, it was really quite scary, I've got to say, because... I was used to standing and working and sitting in a circle with NHS staff and all of a sudden I've got these people I've never met before and what I learned was we're all human beings and actually this, this methodology, this method of sitting collectively together all at the same height, all in the same space, listening well to each other and working through this very simple but structured approach unites people. So that was one of the, the, change, the, the compassion circles on change day. Next slide, please. This learning spread far and wide. This is, um, this is Ronnie Kettle. Ronnie Kettle is an inspirational young leader in the NHS in the North East. He works at Northumberland, Tyne and Weir NHS Trust. Um, he joined Twitter as part of the work that we'd been doing. He was a a tra a, an apprentice, a modern apprentice, working with the organisation development team in this organisation. And he joined a network I was involved in and, and got interested in Compassion Circles. And we've been able to teach this young, bright, enthusiastic star of our future to actually spread the learning. Next slide, please. This is our, uh, my final slide, and this is one of the latest groups. Um, it's another piece of work we're really proud, at it, of, uh, proud about at South Tees. These are a group of what we call therapeutic care volunteers, and we have over 200 therapeutic care volunteers. And they came to us and said, we've heard about these compassion circles. Can, can you help us learn about them too? And we sat with these people, and you can see they range in age, they, they range in background, and they're just inspirational people that bring so much to our NHS. So they, they, that's the, the next step of my spread um, in terms of, of compassion circles. So I think for me, my pledge was about stepping outside of my usual boundaries and, and looking at if I'm going to act myself into compassion, it's no good just doing what I do every day, which is trying to be compassionate, trying to work compassionately with the people I work with and bring compassion interventions into the trust. It's got to be about spreading this around the North East. And I'm glad I've done it um, because we've had a ball while we have been doing it. I think we've learnt a lot. So I hope that's useful for you all. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Maxine, so much. Um, and, you know, people, people kind of talk about compassion but I think you know the way that you're um, you're really reflecting on what it means and and I think um, you know working in such a kind of personal you know value driven way I think is is, is um, you know is a model to us all so what I said I'd do now is I'd get Sebastian to comment on what Maxine said and Maxine to comment on Sebastian so um, can we do that next and, and the other thing is if anybody would like to ask any questions um, of Sebastian or Maxine, can you put your virtual hand up? So, um, so let's, let's get, let Maxine get her breath. So, um, Sebastian, your reflection on what um, Maxine said. I think Maxine already knows that uh, I'm a huge fan of this, and I'm keen to implement um, compassion circles in George Eliot. I have been told that I should stick with my. Um, other projects I've got at the moment because I've just started 
um, a version of Schwartz Rounds, which we're calling um, Reflective Spaces. And uh, we just did the second one this week. Um, so I might mention that later, but um, I'm very keen on Compassion Circles. So the, the question I've got is, um, Maxine said, um, Compassion's not enough and we need to act. Um, I've had several conversations with people this week who are under an immense amount of pressure and, um, you know, at risk of burnout. Um, so I'm keen to learn a little bit more about what compassion for self is, because um, I think many of us are driven to do this work and we're passionate, um, and we don't recognize the signals until almost too late that we're overwhelmed. So um, what is compassion for self, and, and what is the action around compassion for self? Um, I, th I think the, um, the, the, what I've learned, Sebastian, is that actually asking the question, which is embedded in that methodology, what have you, be, what have you done in the past period, whether it's a week or a month, which is a, w in which you have been caring for yourself? The first time you run a compassion circle, if you're running it with a group that, that, that run it over time rather than just a one-off, what these people is they struggle with that question the first time because we don't ask each other that question. We don't stop and think, what am I doing to look after myself? What am I doing to, to care for myself? It's not just looking after myself. It's actually caring for myself, being quite kind and compassionate to me. What I've learned with the groups I'm running that, that meet every four to six weeks is the longer they meet, the more interesting their conversation is about that question and the more they focus on that outside, both inside and outside of work. So simple examples would be people start to talk about, I now go for my lunch even if it's 20 minutes. I go for a walk outside. I bring a book to work. People talk about going for a walk in the park. They're very, they're very simple things and people reflect mm. on that as well. That Actually, it's it's e quite easy when you keep it, you're mindful about the need to be kind to yourself, but we don't keep that at the front of our mind in these busy days where lots of people feel that they're on the edge of burnout. Yeah, I think um, great points you're you're making there. Um, that, that's so, a great just, answer. Thank you. That's really clear and helpful. And what comes across so powerful is that it's so simple and it doesn't cost anything. And um, as many of you know, I've been um, using Fitbit for the last year, and I now um, walk more and um, eat less. And, um, and what's happened is many people around me are starting to do similarly. So in the department, several people have got Fitbit. Several people are, you know, it's just infectious that people are starting to eat a bit less and, uh, and walk more. So I can imagine that as it becomes um, acceptable to, um, you know, start looking after yourself in the same way that it's acceptable for everyone not to have a lunch break and everyone to stay late. I think that, yeah. the, you know, the positivity that comes from that is brilliant. Yeah. Great. No, thank you. Thank you um, both. And, and I just, nobody's got their hands up at the moment, but I'm noticing that um, Robin, who is an attendee, Robin um, Saru, you've got a hand, which is an applause hand. So I just wondered, Robin, whether you wanted you want to be unmuted and to ask anything. See if we can unmute Robin. Hi. Yeah, I, I've been doing a bit of work uh, with uh, compassion and appreciation uh, back here in um, Staffordshire and Stoke on Trent. And I, I particularly thought that was interesting looking at the, uh, the three circles. Uh, and the the model around compassion, because when staff are uh, when staff are stressed, they they can't really be creative, and that it's that creative and that energy that we need in order to get change going. So I just wondered how how that's uh, feeding into getting change going where you where you're at with the compassion circles. Um. We, we, I come from an organisation, I'm really lucky that we have high levels of innovation and we've got, like most of the NHS, you know, let's celebrate the fact that it's the 66th birthday tomorrow. And I come from an organisation with 9,000 fantastic staff and we've spent a lot of time over the last 20 years on innovation and change management. And actually we have the reverse problem. We have the problem that people 
take on such a lot of small projects and individual things that they want to do that, that that's the thing that gets in the way of their self care that we so people's discretionary effort is so huge in the organization sometimes to their detriment so we we've had to spend a lot of time talking that through as well which may sound sort of a perverse incentive really but it is about balance and it's about well-being for us so we've never had the problem of people not wanting to innovate. We have, in most of our areas, not all, but in most of our areas, we have the reverse. That's fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, great. Well, great sessions. You know, um, we haven't been in the last couple of um, speakers. We haven't done applause, but I think um, uh, we should we should do that. So, um, for those of you that are that are new, um, if you look along the bar, you can see where you've got your electronic hand. Next to it is um, it's like a, a, a feedback button with a tick, and um, and if you if you um, click on that, it'll um, it'll give you some things to um, some options. So if you go onto the applause and um, and uh, applause um, our speakers, um, Sebastian and um, and Maxine, that would be great. Do you know what I love about this? I mean, we've been we've been ge keeping going with this since um, 8 a.m. and you know just to kind of hear these stories. I tell you, it's so energising, and um, you know we could just keep going all night, really. Well, probably not, but it just feels like it at the moment. So, thank you so much. So, just before we um, are due to go into our other session, I just wanted to ask our Twitter and chat monitor, who's Kathy, um, to just give us some feedback on, um, you know, how are we doing? What's happening on Twitter um, in regard to our hashtag, and what are we hearing? Um, what are we hearing um, in the um, in the chat box? Thanks, thanks, Helen. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. We're, we're, yeah. Okay, we're hearing lots of positivity on Twitter. Uh, interested in the uh, compassion circles. There was lots of interest earlier on today um, in the conversations about uh, the importance of maintaining mental health in in, uh, in all NHS staff. And the wider population, um, and uh, also interest in um, the um, Sebastian's um, free Wi-Fi for staff and uh, hospital patients. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of positivity out there, and a lot of people interested in, in what we're saying. Yeah. Fantastic, and um, thank you. And then 